one of the tricky things about thinking about that question as a postdoc is that I think in the peer space, they have a lot of latitude to, mm -hmm. to kind of ask the question of, of what if that were true? And, and, and I ask myself that a lot because you posed that question to me in a workshop once. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> uh, very helpful. Um, but for the postdocs, I mean, they, they might observe the, these um, microaggressions happening amongst their faculty, mm -hmm. and they might even ask the question, what if this were true? What is my responsibility? But then there's also the, the hierarchical nature yeah. of our institutions mm -hmm. that then stands in the way of, of intervening. And so I think mm -hmm. too often when I give these workshops, I, I focus on the peer strategies because that's the, that's the easier space. And so I think one of the things I hope for higher education is that we can start to think about how do we have these conversations across across the power dynamic mm -hmm. in a way that is constructive yeah. um, rather than critical. Right. Um, that sort of open dialogue um, to flatten the space a bit. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm a big believer that if you're not messing it up, then you're not engaging diversity and inclusion yeah. work, right? Because yeah. I think um, what I love about these conversations is that there's immense complexity and always something more to learn and um, likely so many things that we can miss along the way. And how we don't make those experiences um, solely about us and our own shame and guilt and uh, kind of getting down on ourselves, but use them as an opportunity to embrace um, kind of a, a learning ethos, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, say, um, how can I, you know, be responsive and responsible with what this person has shared with me, um, but commit to action, right? So it can be challenging to figure out kind of how to move forward, right, um, with all of this information and all of this context. And it's one of the reasons why I tend to just lean on community, right? Um, often when I've been um, on the um, experiencing side of microaggressions, but also on the committing side, I tend to self-isolate and um, make those experiences just about myself. And, or as I'm the only one who's committing this microaggression and go into my shame bubble, so <laughs> to speak. And um, what I found is there tends to be more folks who have experienced similar dynamics or are committing similar harms. And so it's helpful to be in dialogue. Um, to talk through um, how um, we can kind of collectively validate each other's experiences and collectively learn, right, um, and make meaning of issues uh, in community versus uh, either on the backs of someone um, or uh, doing so in isolation, mm -hmm. which makes it not impossible to learn, but so much harder. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, those are kind of just two um, approaches that I found um, really useful um, in trying to sort through um, what can be muddy waters at times. And you are a postdoc. How do you how do you deal with this? Yeah. So um, I think community is is also the sort of my approach in the sense that I think. Um, you know, context matters. And I think going towards reconciliation in terms of an individual relationship is, is important, right? And you have to make a decision as to how much emotional energy you want to put into it. Um, I think if you're on the uh, on the position of the one that committed the microaggression, I think the responsibility falls on you to, you know, um, seek sort of uh, accountable re uh, reconciliation in a way that feels uh, comfortable to the person that you, that you did the microaggression to. But yeah, like Rob mentioned, I think for me, it's very important to have a strong support system, um, whether within my workspace, within my academic workspace, or um, outside of it. I think there are times where I'm a fixer, and so I want to fix it. Yeah. And I either want to fix how I feel, because I've experienced something that makes me feel uncomfortable based on you know how I show up, or I know I've stepped in it and I've just made someone else uncomfortable <laughs> and the voices are going off and the <laughs> alarm is going off and fix it, Sarah, fix it, Sarah. And um, it's in those moments where I think it's good that I take a step back. Like I, yeah. I think it's better that I take yeah. a distance from it. I sometimes choose not in the conversation itself to, to deal with it. But I think what I've become brave enough to do is the follow-up. Yeah. So the follow-up of like, you know, I was on a phone call in which you know, I made a remark that I grew up saying all the time where I'm from, but I know now is is not as sensitive as it could be. And 
So in the email where we had the action points from the call, I just sort of said, hey, you know, by the way, on the call, I made this remark, I, it stuck with me, I don't feel comfortable with it, I just want to say, you know, sorry about that, I'm a work in progress kind of thing. And it felt better to, you know, I needed some time to reflect on, mm -hmm. on it myself and, and to think about it. And so I think I, I love the middle ground of still staying engaged, but at the same time, yeah, there are some times in the moment where it's good to stop, it's hot, and yeah. you just say, yeah. let's unpack what happened here, let's take a step back. But there are lots of moments too where I pick the time and the place that, that I wanna have the dialogue. Right. And I think that um, what I try to remember when people approach me is that the, you know, they have chosen a time and how can I be open to their timing and to listen um, in, in the moments where I need to listen. So I'm kind of between, I'm kind of between it. Well, um, yeah, and I don't think the two, the two contradict, they, they yeah. contradict yeah. each other. Self-reflection, community support and, and having well, and like I think, I think engagement is, these are like parallel, I would say. Well, I, I agree and I would agree that Rob's point is what brings it home in the sense that in community it's so much easier. Right, yeah. it's what you were saying. Yeah. Doing it alone is so hard. Yeah, and I think that community needs to Very be true. nuanced, right? So sometimes community needs to be with other individuals from a similar background, and sometimes that community needs to be across difference, mm -hmm. right? Um, and those conversations might look a little bit different and have different nuances around how we frame our needs, how we seek and provide feedback, and how we take responsibility. But both um, are essential. Um, for us to engage more deeply in these conversations. There's a, a researcher, Lee Patel, who talks about uh, this notion of practicing the pause. Right? Mm. So when these moments um, happen, how do we slow ourselves down? Right? Um, whether we're directly impacted, it's something we're witnessing, or it's something that we're doing, how do we just slow things down to take stock of what's coming up within me internally? Right? How am I doing in a given day? Right? Um, sometimes folks use the analogy of microaggressions are like paper cuts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes it feels like a paper cut, and sometimes it feels like you've lost your whole finger. Right? <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, on those days where you know, you're feeling a fingerless, that's probably not the best time to engage. Right? Um, whereas sometimes I, I see a close friend or a colleague who's at that point, but I'm, you know, my bucket's a little fuller. Right? And so I can step in, I can intervene, I can serve as that active bystander in those moments, right? We don't have to do it alone. Yeah. Um, but I don't necessarily have the awareness of either where that colleague is at if we haven't been in dialogue or to know what they need and how they want me to show up for them and vice versa, right? How, what types of support I need. So that community connection and open lines of communication dialogue um, is essential yep. um, for creating more equitable and inclusive environments. Absolutely. Yeah.